Greetings, everyone. We welcome you and all visitors to St. Andrew's Catholic Church's celebration of the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please remember to check the online bulletin to keep you informed of all parish activities and mass times and upcoming communion service times. Today we will have a second collection for St. Vincent de Paul to help families in need in our community. Per the CDC guidelines, masks are required while on campus here at St. Andrews, including for the duration of masks for ages two and up. Please remember to have the mask cover both your mouth and nose for proper protection. Thanks for helping us keep our community safe. Leading us in today's Eucharistic celebration is Father Dan Fleming and our deacon in training, Stan Stewart. Our intention for this Mass is for the repose of the soul of George Maloof. We ask now that you please take a moment to check to see that your cell phones and other electronic devices are turned off before Mass begins. We gather here in our place of worship about to celebrate the gift of our very faith in word and sacrament. Let us take a few moments then to quietly gather our thoughts as we prayerfully ready ourselves for our communal celebration of the Eucharist. Please stand. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down the weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was so weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy morn shall rise, and all thy day be bright. I looked to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life, Still traveling days are long. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather on this beautiful weekend that we celebrate our nation's independence, the founding of our country, some 244 years ago, inasmuch we gather as a people of faith, continuing to pray for our country, pray for the challenges we're currently facing, and pray for the potential that we have as a people. Preparing ourselves to enter these mysteries of Christ's love, we simply just call to mind our openness to God's loving ways. For those times we've wandered, those times we've strayed, those times we've sinned, we ask our Lord now for pardon and peace. I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers, my brothers and, and sisters, that, that I have greatly, have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed, failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, my most, most grievous, grievous fault. fault. Therefore, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, Mary ever-Virgin, all, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie Eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. 
song. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen, Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he. Meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished. He shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, O my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all, 
and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the, dread, from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debitors to the flesh to live according to the flesh, but if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. Hmm. Of all the new realities that are, re- that are a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, it became necessary to postpone the age-old Atlanta tradition known as the Peachtree Road Race. The 10K run scheduled on the 4th of July ever since 1970. And for so many, it is the greatest annual event, particularly if you're an avid runner. And for someone who spent a number of years as a spectator, as I did, chilling with the mimosas, mind you, it always made for a fun morning. And it's really unfortunate that the race has had to be rescheduled to November 26th, which, of course, this year is Thanksgiving Day. And who knows, it's bound to be a much cooler day for the runners as well as for the avid spectators. I might actually go back out again, first time in years. But anyone who knows me, knows that I never really embraced the whole running thing, not at all, or really any sustained part of the workout culture that seems to have swept the country since the early 70s, and particularly the whole running phenom. I mean, I just never got too jazzed up about it. I don't know why. I mean, with all sincerity... I kind of admire so many of you who take fitness so seriously. But whatever gene that is, I don't seem to have it. I mean, a 10K is one thing, right? But what really amazes me most is the number of people who choose to run marathons. 26.2 miles of pure torture, at least by my estimation. And even more incredible, maybe, though, is the percentage of people who actually finish these races, people who look so ordinary, if you will, and sometimes look actually kind of out of shape, yet somehow have the motivation to run more miles in one day than I run in a decade. How in the world do they accomplish it? I mean, it really seems to be impossible. But consider this. I wonder how many of those same runners would finish all 26.2 miles if they were running all by themselves on deserted streets with no one around. Hmm. My guess is not as many. My guess is that many people wouldn't even want to try or would give up once they felt over-fatigued. It's one thing to run a race or do anything difficult, with others at your side and others cheering you on, and a much different thing to do it all by yourself. Then we hear from the sacred scripture, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. You know, every time I hear this reading, In these words from Jesus, my first instinct is to think 
it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. In what way is life easy? In what way are our burdens light? Is Jesus saying that, that, that everything will be a piece of cake, be smooth sailing, if we simply follow him? I don't know about you, but that's not always been my experience. But then I usually take a deeper look. I try to, to look below the surface to see what Jesus is truly saying. And when I do that, I can come to oftentimes different conclusions. A lot of our difficulty with this reading, from my perspective at least, might come from the fact that yoke and burden seem to be such negative words. We hear them and think of toil and exhaustion and being forced to do unpleasant things against our will. But maybe that's not the image Jesus is going for at all. Maybe he wants us to think about these things in a much different way. Let's take yoke first. It might not be obvious at first glance, but a yoke implies that we are hitched to another animal, that we are not toiling alone, but are actually side by side with another who is helping. In other words, the work is being shared, not simply in the sense that someone else knows what we are going through, but is actually assisting us along the way. And likewise, the word burden doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can simply mean the work or goal, that, that which we're trying to achieve. And with these meanings, then, the words yoke and burden paint a much different picture, especially for people of faith. If we think back to those who run marathons, the reason so many are able to finish, I believe, is because they are in it with other people. Part of a, a like-minded group are there to, to help, encourage, inspire, model, and lead. Marathon runners feel a part of something bigger than themselves, part of a group effort, especially when there are charities that, that stand to benefit from their efforts, as is all, almost always the case. And maybe Jesus is saying that same thing about faith, about discipleship, about life. My friends, without a doubt, life is really hard. I don't have to tell you that. Perhaps now, more than any time in our nation's recent past, as we're dealing with an out-of-control health pandemic, as racial injustices are raised to the forefront of our collective consciences, as our economy is tanking for some of the most disadvantaged, and all as our nation recognizes 244 years since its founding. These are surely challenging times on, on so many fronts. And if we believe that we have to go it alone, it may feel more than a little overwhelming, a kind of prison from, from which there is really no escaping. But if we believe that Jesus is not only leading us, but is also joined to us, helping us every step of the way, working with us as we strive to live as God asks us to live, and then our lives can become something beautiful and meaningful and, and in a sense, easy, and therefore 
not an enormous burden holding us back or tying us down. That, plain and simply put, takes faith. And one more thing. We not only try to see ourselves yoked to Jesus, we also need to see ourselves yoked to each other. A family inspired by faith and a God in whom we trust, united for a sacred purpose, promoting humanity, working toward a, a greater and, and greater justice. Sacred journey to bring Jesus to a world desperately in need of him, need of his mercy, his kindness, his generosity, and his love. So, let's try not to do it alone. Rather, let's do it together, united by the, the meal we share right here at this table with both Jesus and, and each other at our sides. If we can do that, I'm pretty sure we will never feel the urge to give up, but rather, together, we will be finishing the race, bringing to fulfillment all that God is asking of us. On behalf of the clergy and staff here at St. Andrew, I want to wish all of you gathered with us and those who are viewing from home still because of the con constrictions or restrictions of the pandemic, uh, we want to wish you a very blessed, safe, and healthy experience of this 4th of July weekend. God bless us all, and may God mend thy every, th thy every flaw. Recognizing our call as Christians in this world, we stand together as we bring our prayers of petition and praise before our almighty God. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> as we together proclaim our profession of faith, stating, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, born again for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For our sake, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And now let us bring our prayers of petition and praise before our almighty God. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the bishops, priests, deacons, religious men and women, along with all lay leaders. May they look to the humble and lowly for inspiration and understanding as they seek to follow Jesus, effectively calling all 
who are burdened to come to Christ, in whom they will find rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. As we celebrate our independence this weekend, may we acknowledge through our many freedoms the equality and dignity of all humanity, treating others with respect, rising above division, all with the willingness to listen with compassion, while actively working for justice, peace, and unity among all peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family of St. Andrew, gathered here and those joining us to remember, to remotely, may we truly seek the Spirit of God to dwell within us among all our faith journey, working together as a community to lift up the most vulnerable in our midst and to end all forms of oppression. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all those responsible for public safety, especially the men and women of our military, firefighters, police officers, and public health officials, may they experience divine protection in their work, helping them return home safely and to experience love and appreciation for their commitment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the many travelers this summer, may they practice caution during this time of health crisis so that all may enjoy a peaceful, healthy, and happy vacation and returning safely home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, suffering, lonely, the poor, and all who are weary from the burdens of daily life. May they find support, solace, and rest in the love of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased family members and friends, especially for all those who died, serving to protect the right of freedom for all people, May they now share in the peace and joy of eternal life. And for all those who mourn, may they find comfort in the Lord who is faithful in all his works and raise up all who are burdened or bowed down. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who champions the lowly and lifts up all who are bowed down, you sent your Son, Jesus, to teach us the way of humility. Hear our prayers that in following him, we may give rest to the weary and build up the kingdom of God. We ask these things through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Endeavor.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our inequities and cleanse us of our sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Pray, pray the Lord in his name. May, the Lord the Holy Church. may this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, Andrew, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Archbishop, Joel and Ned, our auxiliary bishops, and all those who serve your church. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, together we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that that you should should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Physicians, I want to just take a moment to point out to any of you who uh, may be joining us for the first time since we've had our reopening, we have a different flow to our communion distribution. We'll be using only the side aisles to approach the altar, all three of the sections. As you approach the Eucharistic minister or myself, you will uh, keep the mask on in place, please. You'll receive the Eucharist when presented to you as the body of Christ, keeping the mask on, and then you'll step over, left or right, depending on the direction you're coming from, to an X. And on the X on the floor, at this point, you'll remove the mask, consume the Eucharist, replace the mask, and head down the center aisle of either section. Okay, I'll show you how that's done. Eric, the body of Christ. believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Taste and see Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of
has been so good to me. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and Please remain seated. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Even though we're kind of in a holiday mode around the parish, we still do have some things going on. Lots of behind the scenes planning and all kinds of stuff happening to gear up for the fall. Um, starting this week, July 6th, we'll be resuming our communion services on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. This is at 9 a.m. This is just a, a part of our phase two of reopening, so we're real excited about that. Um, and also, uh, part of that phase two is the a reminder that visitation, although not adoration, will start beginning next Monday, uh, July 13th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., where you can come into the church nice and quiet, just some prayer time. Obviously, the uh, Eucharist will be in the tabernacle, but just an opportunity. We do ask that you please maintain all the social distancing protocols, which includes, of course, wearing a mask, uh, using the... Uh, the hand sanitizer dispensers on the way in and what have you. St. Andrew Preschool is now enrolling for the 2021 school year for children one to four years old. You can call the office for more information beginning on Tuesday this week and actually if you'd like to book a tour of the facilities. Uh, for, for all details or contact information with everything concerning parish life or faith formation, please remember to check out the uh, online bulletin. <clears throat> um, as often as the case, uh, with all the different procedures that we've put into place, our procedures for departure are also have also been revised since we've reopened. And I have to say this every week because of the number of folks joining us for the first time. And we're glad to see that more and more folks are returning. That's a big deal. We will continue to broadcast or stream the mass uh, each week starting uh, every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So uh, please check it out. If for any reason you can't join us on a given weekend, marvelous opportunity. Our departure procedures are also taking place on the side aisles. Our greeters will come up and dismiss uh, beginning at the back, the pews one at a time, and we're asking all three sections to head out the door closest in your section. So you'll be heading out from the side aisles 
out that way, and if you're in the south transept, out that way, and the middle section, out this way. Um, we ask that you stay together with the, your, your household or the, that you're sitting with, um, that you continue to maintain social distancing, that you keep the mask on and in place until you get to your car. And this is, again, just our every effort to make this place as, uh, as reasonable as possible with all the mandates of uh, social distancing protocols. So please, if you help us, that'll be helpful for everyone. Our second collection today, our, the offertory opportunities are at the doors as well, and our second collection today, uh, this being the first weekend of the month, is our St. Vincent de Paul um, collection. And this is the biggest outreach effort that we do right here in our backyard. And we've been very blessed in the last couple of months. People have been very generous, but the need is mounting exponentially. So please, help us help others. We're grateful for your contributions. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, my friends, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let us go forth in the peace of Christ, continuing to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make us holy, let us die that all be free while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah.